What's up guys, uh, my name is Kenji and uh, we're back again with another video. Uh, so this is a two step. If you guys haven't seen my last video, um, we made a video on a certain topic in, um, in to do with medicine and I'm back again with her. Thank you for having um, me back on your channel. No worries. Do you want to kind of introduce yourself before we start? Uh, yes, so as Kenji said, I'm Atusa. I've got a YouTube channel um, and all over on my channel I talk mostly about biomedical sciences mm -hmm. and cancer research and um, doing your, doing a PhD and a master's and those kind of things because those yep. are what I know of, I yep. guess. So. so I will put a link uh, to her channel in the description so make sure you check her out as well. Um, but in this video I've got my laptop here with me so I'll be asking you a few questions about applying to uh, to do a master's or a PhD. Yeah. <laughs> so if I can just kind of fire away. Of course. So okay, so what was your, your past, your present and your future? So what did you do before? Uh, what are you doing now and what do you want to do? Okay, so um, I did the same as Kenji. So I also did my undergraduate degree in biomedical sciences, mm -hmm. um, except I studied at Newcastle University. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved my degree. I think it was like so much fun. But when I finished, I still wasn't fully sure about what I wanted to do, what area of science I wanted to go to. Um, so I decided to take a year out. And in that year, I realized that I think my passion is in research and science and just medicine. So I went and I studied a master's in um, transitional cancer medicine, and it is an MRes, so it's a master of research at mm -hmm. King's College. Oh, sorry, what's the difference between an MRes and like an MSc? Okay, so I think an MRes because it's research, it tends mm -hmm. to be mostly lab based. So okay. I had probably I don't know maybe like twelve lectures in total, mm -hmm. um, like once every Monday, and then for twelve months straight yeah. you're in a lab. So okay. it's essentially like doing a first year of a PhD where you just right. you're working nine to five in a lab mm -hmm. full time. Okay. So that's the difference. Whereas an MSc tends to be more like six months of teaching and six months of like full time lectures and then mm -hmm. six months in okay. the lab. Great. And so what's the future? You kind of said, mentioned medicine a little bit. Yes. Is that definitely um, what you do? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, f for the present, after I did my master's, I got my current job, which is a research technician at King's College, and that's in uh, cancer research. So mm -hmm. I kind of have like lots of fingers and lots of pies and um, working on research projects here and there, doing sometimes with clinical trials. Mm -hmm. um, but since I did my master's, and because yeah. it was so translational, and um, the current job I've got now, I mm -hmm. would love to go and do medicine. So Hopefully, the future for me, fingers crossed, cross is, is. <laughs> is medicine. Great. So. Um, and why exactly do you want to do a master's? Like, what brought you towards doing a master's? Why not, you know, a PhD and then come back to medicine later? Yeah, or, you of know, course. Um, so, one of my main reasons for choosing a master's is when I took this year out of yeah. my undergraduate degree, mm. I I had kind of like taken myself out of the loop. Okay. And I think one of my main reasons for doing a master's is to just reintroduce myself to the world of science mm -hmm. and network and get to know people and get to like become more updated because mm -hmm. when you're not like immersed in the world of research it moves so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was like, one of my main reasons that I knew I like research, mm -hmm. I knew I love science mm -hmm. and I kind of wanted to build that all over again. So right. that was one of my Perfect. So to do your masters, do you think there's any kind of um, key skills that prepared you for your job now and also as a doctor one oh day God. as well? So many. Okay, so for my current job now, which is mm. in research, absolutely. Um, okay. I think if anybody is wanting to go and do a masters in science, especially if it's lab based, mm. it's not always lab based. Yeah. It really taught me to like deal with my anxieties and. Okay. Something, I mean, I'm sure you're learning this in a lab now, but like mm -hmm. experiments sometimes don't work. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, like I would cry, it's really bad. Like there was a day where I would, I would spend like a week on an experiment and you have to do so much yeah, work. Yeah. And then by the end of it, something happens and you yeah. don't get results. That actually happened to me yesterday. And yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. I don't want to bring it up on oh, camera. It's, it's yeah, like, it is like soul destroying, isn't it? it and is, I would constantly, honestly. like I would constantly be thinking about it, be constantly anxious. And it's kind of helped me develop a bit more, um, just like mm. strength and just think, well, you know, things don't always work out, it's okay, you just have to pick yourself up and yeah. keep going. Mm. Um, and in terms of research, yeah. I think, considering a lot of people tend to think that mm -hmm. if you go into research, it's very unsociable, because yeah. you're just working with lab and stuff. I feel like because of the masters I did, which mm. does involve a bit more like patient and yeah. um, role in getting patients on it, built me the, it helped me build the confidence to mm -hmm. talk to doctors and talk to nurses and talk to lots yeah. of other people. Okay. Um, and that sense, I think it definitely like prepared me a bit more. Great. 
<laughs> and um, okay, so to kind of get to the topic of this video, what is the application process? So if I want to do a master's, mm -hmm. I want to do a PhD, um, how are they different in terms of application processes and like yeah. what exactly does it entail? Sure, so a master's is a bit more like applying to your undergraduate in the sense that, um, so I guess, let me mm. think, so when I was applying for my master's, I yeah. applied quite late, mm. so I applied maybe around May time okay. and I essentially went on their website and mm. they would say like applications are open. So is it UCAS or um, like directly to university? I can't remember, mm. I, gosh sorry, I, I'll, leave, I'll leave all the links below, mm. I think I think it was directly to the university. Okay. It works a bit differently. It's not quite UCAS yet. Okay. But it, it was directly, um, and all of, like the application mm -hmm. uh, forms is there. Like you know, they ask you for like your previous history, previous experience, all mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and for the most part, it's quite mm -hmm. straightforward, and they will talk you through everything. Mm -hmm. And they did say that they had an interview. Okay. But it's funny because. When they said that I had, I had an interview, I thought, oh my god, this is going to be make or break. Yeah. But later on, yeah. it found out that I had already gotten a place, the interview was just to match me up to a supervisor. Oh, right. Right, yeah. And I don't know if all courses work like that, but mm -hmm. that's how it works in King's. Okay. Um, and I will like send, I'll leave you some links so you oh, can great. leave uh, for your subscribers below. Yeah. Um, in terms of the PhD, that's a bit more like a full-time job. Okay. So you would apply to a PhD in the sense of like it's a job application, mm -hmm. you would write to them and and um, go through that process mm -hmm. that way but i've not done that personally okay. so i can only give you second-hand information mm -hmm. and so with the master's application is there like a personal statement you must write yes mm -hmm. so it's a personal statement that you write in the same way that you might apply to university yeah and um, and i think one of the best things about applying to a master's is that unlike ucas where mm -hmm. you only have four choices yep. and your personal statement has to be the same mm -hmm. you can apply to I think as many as you like for mm -hmm. your masters. I think I applied to eight. Okay. I got into seven. Ooh, well done. I know, <laughs> no, like imperial, and wow. I, that was only because I, ha I had an issue with my imperial um, application. So I mm -hmm. don't know if I did get in or not. Maybe yeah. I didn't. But you probably did. Too bad. They messed up basically. Okay. Though, though it was like a mistake. Anyway, um, so like eight is good because you've got like so much of a yeah, like, variation. Yeah, it's not loads. Yeah. yeah. And the best thing is, your personal statement can be different to each of them. So okay. you so can, can kind of like tailor it to the university. Yes, like, and I yeah. think that's such a good opportunity because it kind of like, if a university is yeah. more research based, you can go into that. If a university is more like medical, you can like mm -hmm. put your strengths that way. So okay. that's a really good thing. So, so there's a personal statement, there's possibly an interview. Is there mm -hmm. anything else about the application process that they should probably know? Um, I think one of the best things that you can do, yeah. even for jobs, even for PhDs, mm -hmm. is try and make contact before. Because okay. my supervisor who I had for my masters, mm. I sent before I even applied for the masters, I sent her an email before saying like, mm. "Hi, doctor, blah blah blah. Um, I've come across your research. I really like what you do. Mm. I want to apply for this masters. Um, do you have any advice for me, or like, would I be able to chat to you?" Yeah. And I didn't get a response. Okay. But she picked me mm -hmm. to be to work for her yeah. for six months. And I think I brought it up to her and I said, oh, do you remember? She was like, you know, come to think about it. Think about it. I do I do remember mm -hmm. like an email that you sent me, but she's a clinician, so she's very busy, so yeah. she didn't reply. Okay. But remember that these little things leave mm -hmm. an impact. Definitely. Um, and because it's not like you, Cass, you have an opportunity to do it. So mm -hmm. take that opportunity. That's true. Thanks so much. Okay, next question. Coke, it's, uh, it's cranberry juice. <laughs> Okay. Don't drink the stuff, it's awful. <laughs> so how hard was your master's compared to your undergraduate degree, would you say? Because so your master's was oh, in cancer, right? Yes. And you did cancer, cancer as well, medicine. obviously slightly in your mm -hmm. biomedical degree. But what was what made it hard or was it on the same level, would you say? Right, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you guys here. My master's broke me as a person. It <laughs> really? literally broke my soul, broke my spirit. Right. Part of it is because I wasn't prepared for it. Okay. So studying at an undergrad, it's hard, mm -hmm. but it's different hard. Okay. Because when you are studying, yeah. you are in control, you have to take um, mm -hmm. ownership of your studying, of your yeah. notes, of your lectures, you have to do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, in my master's, because it was an Emirates, because I was working yeah. full time, it felt more like a job. Okay. And it felt less like a student because mm -hmm. you're working with colleagues who are far more senior than you. Yeah, and yeah. in my masters, I think I struggled a little bit because mm -hmm. for my first group, my supervisor, she didn't have a group. Okay. So it was just me and her, oh, and wow. she was a doctor, and she was in clinics. So I yeah. was essentially left alone, having to figure out everything by myself, having mm -hmm. to like work at like 
I was based at King's, but I was working partly at the ICR, which is the Institute of Cancer Research, partly at UCL, okay. and partly at Guy's Hospital and also at New Hunts House. So oh, wow. I was in between all these people and I had to like liaise with all these people. And yeah. It was so difficult. Wow, yeah. Because experiments weren't working and mm -hmm. my supervisor wasn't there for okay. me to say, please, can you help me? So mm -hmm. I had to just kind of figure out. So it, that, in that sense, it was really mm -hmm. hard. Okay. But I don't regret it for a minute. Okay. Whereas when you are studying like as an undergrad, mm -hmm. you are supported a lot more, okay. you know, um, and I always joke and say that doing a master's is like being a middle child. <laughs> when you're an undergrad, people really spoon feed you, people like are always there to make sure you're okay. Yeah. When you're a PhD student, you're doing important stuff. Mm -hmm. So people want to make sure that you're not wasting time and you know, that they're there for you. But as a master's student, it's kind of like, well, this is kind of serious, yeah. but not like so serious that we need to give them time. So okay. in that sense, it was very hard, but in a good way, yeah. I can say Maybe that. you made it and you, yeah. you got here in the end. I mean, I've learned to control, I mean, touch wood, I've learned <laughs> to like control my anxiety levels yeah. somewhat because I got so stressed mm. to the point where I was like, you know, everything just calmed down. Yeah, so. yeah. But no, I think it was a really, really good thing. And if you're yeah. somebody who enjoys a challenge, which I hope you do, mm -hmm. um, then don't don't be put off by the amount of work. Okay, great. That sounds great. Oh, and I actually, sorry, I'll just say one more thing as go well. Ahead, go ahead. I've got a few blogs of what it's like to actually work in lab. Oh, that's and, a good point. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are kind of like tongue in cheek and stuff, but like in there, because mm -hmm. everything was happening live, I talked yeah. to you about whether I'm tired or whether I'm stressed yeah. or whatever. So that gives a real representation yeah. in case you're interested. And they're really good actually, so you yeah, definitely go check them out. I'm really enjoying <laughs> this video, so little key there. Still not drinking sugar water. <laughs> okay, so the last kind of question is, is there anything you'd have done differently or anything mm -hmm. else um, you'd preferred applying for? They'll still get you to where you are and prepare you for the future. Absolutely. So, um, in the position that I was in, yeah. um, in that I had taken a year off and mm. I wanted to get myself back into education and back into research. Yeah. I think for me, masters was a really good choice. Okay. But I always recommend this to everybody who or anybody who has an interest in this field, mm. um, to go and do industrial placements. Okay. Um, and I made a video with one of my friends who did an industrial placement, mm -hmm. and. She, she did it and she was saying mm -hmm. that we essentially did the same thing. She worked in a lab for a year, I did a master's in a lab for a year. Mm -hmm. I had to pay the master's fee, which was like my cost was like £10,000 over that, like on top of having to live Gosh, in London, which yeah. is really expensive. So I had to take out loads of loans and, you know, used to go into my savings and all this kind of stuff, ask for help from my parents. Yeah. And um, whereas she got to do this industrial year and mm -hmm. she got paid by student finance the same amount that she wow. would have gotten paid to do a, uh, to do a master. Yeah. So I would say if you're in that situation, look into those options mm -hmm. and because a lot of the things that you're going to learn through a master's, mm -hmm. you will learn through other things. Yeah. Definitely. So bear in mind that those are things that are available to you. Okay. Um but personally no, I, I you know, given my circumstance and given where I was at the time, I mm -hmm. think it was the best option and I'm so lucky and I'm yeah. so grateful that I got the opportunity to come and study here because mm -hmm. it's amazing and I love it and I yeah. and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. So Okay, great. And time for you on the spot here to, to close this video. Um, is there if you could go back in time, mm -hmm. what is one thing you would like to hear um, from yourself and what is something you can advise people Ooh. who want to apply apply some masters or PhD? Who wants to okay. Um, it's not, like, don't think about your masters in the same way you would think mm. about your degree. Mm. I have spoken about this to multiple people who yeah. did my masters with me last year, mm. and we all thought that it's going to be a lot easier yeah. than it was. Because mm. my experience of research in the past have been, you know, there's always someone with you, as I said, yeah. as an undergrad, yeah. you get more support. And that I thought, um, you know, it's going to be easy, the project is going to be laid out, all I have to do is do something and then write it up, and that's mm. it, I've got qualifications. Yeah. But you, it's you really have to push yourself okay. and don't let that put you off um but you really do have to push yourself you really do have to want it don't walk into a master's thinking that it's going to you know it's just a year that's going to fly by because um that's not often the case and mm. i wish someone had said to me to take it more seriously yeah because one of the worst things i did is i started my master's and i was like oh this is great and my supervisor because as i said she wasn't there all the time yeah and um, she would kind of, you know, we would text them and stuff, so like from a distance. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, you know, I don't have to do that much work. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's fine. Like, I can just wrap up to the lab. 
it got like two months before my deadline uh-huh. and I was like, I do not have as much data as I need to write yeah. a 10,000 word dissertation. Wow. And that was just like panic and nightmarish. Mm. So I would want somebody to tell me to take more ownership of it from mm-hmm. the beginning and remember that as a master's student, you have to be very independent. Mm-hmm. So That's amazing yeah. advice. So thank you so much, Atusa, for coming on You're the welcome. channel. Um, it's so been so me. good. I really hope this video is somewhat informative. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, go check out her channel. She has amazing videos. Um, like I said, I was a subscriber to her before, um, so I can definitely vouch for her channel. My number one fan. <laughs> massive, massive fan girl. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for the video, guys. Um, we will be in the same lab for the next couple of uh, months or years, maybe. Um, wait, no, actually, no. Well, possibly. Well, maybe the next year if you get into medicine. If not, yeah. but I'll be I'll be I'll be hanging out with the labs for a while. I'll be around. So if there's any suggestions, like for any sort of video that you wanted us to do, just let us know in the comments. Um, yes. Subscribe to her. Subscribe to me. Um, make sure you give us a few likes as well. Yes. And thank you so Lots much for watching. <laughs> and we'll see you guys uh, in the next one. Thank you.